Got a beautiful little problem for you today, and I find these problems, I share them with you, but I'm gonna try something a little bit different today. I'm gonna do a live solve of this problem. So this is a problem that I have not already solved. I'm not gonna tell you I haven't thought about it a little bit, I have an idea of how I'm going to begin, but I have not yet solved this question. And honestly, I don't know if this is gonna work. Basically, either it will and you're watching this video, or it won't and it's never gonna see the light of day. The problem here comes from globalmathproject.org. If we have a number added to its reciprocal that equals negative one, then what is the value of that number raised to the 99th power plus its reciprocal raised to the 99th power. In symbols, you can see it up here. If x plus one over x equals negative one, find x to the 99th plus one over x to the 99th. Now, like I said, I have thought about this a little bit, and my initial idea is let's go ahead and raise both sides of this expression to a power of two. On the left side, I'm gonna multiply this out with something I call the box method. So I'm gonna multiply out x plus one over x times itself. Now, the reason I had this idea when I initially saw this problem is, of course, x times x is going to be x squared, and 1 over x times 1 over x is 1 over x squared. And that itself is interesting because I can see kind of why it might end up that I'm going to raise the number to some large power and its reciprocal to some large power. But even more interestingly, as I fill in these other two boxes, x times 1 over x is one, the variable goes away entirely. Same thing, of course, down here, x times one over x is one, and so when I square this left-hand side, what I end up with is x squared plus one over x squared. So again, that's where the expression kind of starts to take on this same form that I know my answer needs to be in, plus two from these other two boxes, and this whole thing is supposed to be equal to the square of negative one, the square of that right-hand side, which is indeed positive one. Subtract two, subtract two, and you can see that what that ends up meaning is this number squared plus its reciprocal squared is also equal to negative one. So we now have these two different pieces of information. Some number plus its reciprocal is negative one. That number's square plus the square of its reciprocal is also negative one. One thing we might do at this point is just guess, well, maybe every single power of this number plus that same power of its reciprocal is always negative one. Maybe the answer to x to the 99th plus one over x to the 99th just is negative one also. Just to check and make sure though, let's do this one more time. Let's do one more box method kind of thing. But this time what I wanna do is take each of the left-hand sides of these two pieces of information I now have and multiply those together using that same box method. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit this time because I can already see that that right-hand side is again going to work out to positive one. Negative one times negative one is positive one. On this left-hand side, I'm gonna be multiplying x plus one over x times x squared plus one over x squared. And an interesting pattern emerges here as I work out this multiplication. x squared times x is once again going to be the next power up, in this case, x cubed. Just like one over x times one over x squared is going to be one over x cubed. But these other two boxes this time, they do not cancel out. x squared times one over x is x itself. x times one over x squared is one over x. And so what I actually end up with is this expression, x cubed, plus one over x cubed plus x plus one over x is equal to one. The reason that's interesting to me is that I know what x plus one over x is. If we do a little substitution here, x plus one over x, again, is the piece of information we started with. It's equal to negative one. And then we bring that negative one to the other side. We end up with the next level up. x cubed plus one over x cubed is actually equal to two. So first of all, I can see the pattern breaks, or at least the pattern as I understood it a moment ago, negative one, negative one every single time, that pattern breaks. It's not that all of these sums end up being equal to negative one. So where does this leave us? Let's kind of reassess right now. We've got x plus one over x equals negative one. That of course was given to us. We've got x squared plus one over x squared also was negative one. We figured that out. The kind of naive pattern that maybe every single set of these powers is just always gonna add up to negative one didn't work out here because we can see that x cubed plus one over x cubed is actually two. And clearly I don't wanna sit here and do this process again 96 more times to get all the way to x to the 99th. But I don't think we're gonna have to because remember when we did this with x x squared plus one over x squared times x plus one over x, we had this kind of interesting result where we 
ended up at that next level up, x cubed plus one over x cubed, plus the initial term itself. And I don't think that was just a coincidence. Imagine we wrote this in general, any x plus one over x. In fact, I wanna give this a name so I can stop talking about like the levels of these numbers. I'm gonna call this capital X sub one. I know that capital X and lowercase x, particularly mine, don't actually look different, so just imagine with me. If this is capital X sub one, I wanna multiply this by capital X sub n. That is kind of the generic nth level of this expression. X to the n plus one over X to the n. I can see that X sub one is of course just negative one, and so this product should always work out to the negative of whatever X sub n is. The negative of negative one, the negative of two, and so on. And when I take this expression and I multiply it out, X plus one over X times X to the n plus one over X to the n, again, I get kind of this interesting pattern that emerges. This would just be X to the n plus one power, this would be one over x to the n plus one power. So we could write about that sum in general, x to the n plus one plus one over x to the n plus one. Uh, using our symbols, that would be capital X sub n plus one. That's the next term in a kind of sequence that we're creating. These other two boxes would always end up being one power lower because we're essentially taking away one power when we multiply by the reciprocal. x to the n minus one and one over x to the n minus one. Again, we can write that out normally, plus x to the n minus one plus one over x to the n minus one. Using our new symbology, this would be like capital X n minus one. And remember, this right here is equal to negative x sub n. And so here's where this gets interesting. This can be treated like a sequence rather than a set of multiplications. If it's true in general that as a sequence, the next term in the sequence plus the previous term in the sequence is always equal to the negative of the present term in the sequence, we can rearrange this a little bit to tell us this piece of information. X sub n plus one, so our next term in the sequence, is always equal to the negative of the current term plus the negative of the previous term. Or if you'd prefer, the negative of the current term and the previous term added together. Think about what this means for like x sub three. x sub three would be the negative of x sub two plus x sub one. That is x sub three is the negative of negative one plus negative one. Negative one plus negative one is of course negative two and the negative of negative two is positive two, which is precisely what we saw. X sub three, that X cubed plus one over X cubed was indeed positive two. But we can just as easily apply this definition to figure out like the fourth term in the sequence. X sub four will be the negative of X sub three plus X sub two. X sub three, of course, we know to be two. X sub two was negative one. And so x sub four is going to be equal to the negative of two plus negative one. Two plus negative one is positive one. The negative of positive one is negative one. And now that is very interesting to me. X sub four goes back to being negative one. So let's think about how this is playing out. The first term was negative one. The second term was negative one. The third term was two the fourth term went back to being negative one. If we extend out this logic a little bit, we could find the fifth term by adding together the third term and the fourth term, two plus negative one is positive one, and taking the negative of that, which is negative one, and now I can see this is the repeating pattern. First term, second term, fourth term, fifth term, seventh term, eighth term, 10th term, 11th term, all of the terms that are not multiples of three will be negative one, and every term that is a multiple of three is always positive two. So this tells us that x sub 99 would be positive two, which means x to the 99th plus one over x to the 99th is equal to positive two. And there you have it. That's how I would approach this question. Whew. That was a lot of work. I'm probably gonna post this as a YouTube video, not necessarily as a TikTok. This is a little long for TikTok, even though I have access to my 10 minute videos. If you're watching this on YouTube, 
I am also over on TikTok and like and subscribe, comment down below. How did you approach this question? There's a whole method called exploding dots. That's the global math project thing that I ignored entirely because I'm a little more comfortable working with symbols, but comment down below. How did you solve this question? Follow for more and otherwise I'll see y'all next time.